Here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Right at our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's like this 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. At 1-800-5800-TOM, it's 1-800-5800-866. This is Chris on Like Us 101. Hello. Hey, Professor. Um, I just want to start off by saying it's an honor to be on the show. I'm sure it is. Uh, my question to you, um, I just started listening to your show for the past two months. Um, I noticed that before I started listening to it, I, I pretty much... Uh, did the things that you say to do on your show anyway. So um, listening to your show, it's just, just reassuring. I got a question, though. I want to want to see your the way you feel about this situation. I got this girl that um, I've known since high school. I'm 22 now. Uh, I've known her since high school, and I uh, always had a crush on her, started dating my friend. So I ended up becoming her friend. And um, after they broke up, I tried to... Uh, I tried to step our relationship up, but she just always saw me as a friend. She had and that's the way it will always be. Uh, so that's, it's just not going to happen. So you were not really friends. You were waiting for an opportunity to have sex with her. Exactly. Which is what I always tell women, that they don't have male friends. They have guys who want to bang them. Yes. So uh, what happened is that I stopped talking to her because she had a boyfriend or whatever. And then... Um, then she started calling you saying, I never hear from you anymore. I thought we were friends. Yeah, so she would call me every, every uh, f like, three months or so and, and right. say that exact line. And then right. I, and I'd ask her, you got a boyfriend? She'd say, yeah. I'd drop her again. Three months go by. She finds my number again. She calls me again. Anyway, now um, I figured it would be evident to her that I'm, I'm not trying to be her friend. I ask her, as soon as I ask her that she's got a boyfriend, she says, yes, I don't call her back. So I, I, th I would think that's evident to her now. So It doesn't now, matter if it's evident. Uh, any of these times she called every three months, did she ever come over and have sex with you? Never. That's right. So you have your answer. But this is my question now. Now she called me again out of the blue, and now she's not with her boyfriend anymore. Right. So you did you ask her if she wants to have sex with you? I didn't ask her. Well, you no. should, because why waste your time? I, I don't know. Don't you think that would be just kind of up front? Yes. Like you know what? Friend. Save yourself the time. You tell her point blank that you never saw her as just a pal, that you've been waiting for your opportunity, and if the opportunity is never going to come, she should tell you now. That, that, makes, that makes total sense. You know, be a man, sack up. And then uh, to stop wasting your time. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And if I get the chance to come back on and tell you how to win, I'll definitely do that. Please sir. do. Can you take me out uh, Kobe Bryant style? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. There are beats in my heart. Oh. In the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, I am your professor. This is Likus one hundred one. Uh, Dave on the Tom Likus show. Hello. Hey Tom, how you doing? Great. So I've got. I'm living through hell right now. I'm going through a divorce, and it's my second divorce. And I, I just a friend of mine turned me on to you just a few weeks ago, and I wanted to share my experience with your listeners so they could avoid some of this. I mean, it's real hell. It's like a nightmare. Um, Brazilian, uh, hot, perfect body, great, everything else. Just got off the boat, meet her, uh, meet her, you know, in a random place near the beach, start dating immediately. She moves in. She probably lived on the beach. Probably was before, yeah. 
I mean, and, and here's the thing. This is my second... I mean, I'm, I'm repeating the same stupid mistake, although the first one, the first Brazilian, was very wealthy. So it goes... It, it plays exactly into what your, you know, the prenup and all this other stuff that you talk about. The first one was very wealthy. She had a lot more to lose than I did. And when we decided to get a divorce, she left, and it was... She left as quickly as possible, and I left as quickly as possible. Of course, I could have... I could have been like these girls who, you know, try to destroy your life, but I didn't. I just walked away. But this second one has a lot, you know, has nothing to lose. And she's just trying, she's just making my life hell. She's taking all this, as much money from me as possible, um, even though she promised the whole time that if anything ever happened, she would never want my money. Why would you believe that? Because I'm an, I was an idiot. I was an absolute idiot. And, and I was in, you know, I was in a, you know, you get, I, I like sex a lot. I was blinded by, by that. And the, But you were having sex. The minute the sex was going to have a price tag, that's when it's time to get up and leave. Right. It's got a price tag. And I have a question for you, if you wouldn't mind. About that's what, what I'm, I'm here for. What's going on now. So, so I just want these guys to know that, that this, that the, all the rules, I've, I've copied those rules down. I'm, I, I carry them around with me. But here's the one problem I've got. I, I go on, you know, I got on this one of these internet things. I started dating, and it's been working great. Um, but I found one that, it, it, here's my problem. You, 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 you have sex with, with one, and then you're supposed to leave her and then go find a, a new one. How do I? How do you deal with that week or you know week and a half or two weeks? That, whatever that period of time is in between, when you're well, that's why I tell you to have a bullpen. You want to have women you can call in from the bullpen to fill the nights that are not filled by your starting pitchers. So, so you don't have to say goodbye forever. You can just you, you just don't have the to. Bullpen. The time to say goodbye forever is when they start demanding a price for their services, like marriage or being taken out, or that you remember them on their birthday or Valentine's Day and things like that, that's when it's time uh, to trade them to another T. Okay, so I just, I'm, I've, been, I've been very impatient and I've been uh, unsuc just bad at building up this bullpen. Yeah, what you want to do is, uh, and, and you do this by never, ever seeing them a lot of times in a short period of time. You want to stretch that? that out. So if you if you uh, if you bang one, don't see her for a couple of weeks. Don't go right back the next day or the next weekend or three days later. Bang her. Put some time in there. That phone time, calls or no phone calls or not. Even try to calls. avoid the phone calls, the text messaging. Uh, put it this way: for every three calls she makes to you, answer one. Okay. You have to appear to be busy, too busy to be with her. Right. You are busy. It doesn't matter what you're busy doing or what she thinks you're busy doing. Yeah, you can't be answering on half a ring all the time. Right. And I have a feeling you're one of those guys. Well, sometimes I sometimes I pull through and I and I do what you you know and I listen to the program. I'm good at the I'm good at everything you suggest except two things: the waiting. Because I get, I get impatient, and if it's a, if she's good in the sack, I, I tend to just keep it going. Yeah, but you see, the more you keep it going, the more likely it is you'll have to pay for it, as you did with two previous marriages. Yeah, yeah. I mean, is there anything else you want me to explain about those that would help your listeners? Because I'm telling you, it, it, it is horrible. I wouldn't wish this on. But the, the trick is, you know, as as I say on this program, uh, you know, people ask if you're better off buying or leasing. You're always better off leasing. Right. So here's it, it, my last thing for you. I'm, a, I'm very close to my family, right? My sister is a great girl. Now, I believe in everything you're saying, but at the same time, the, to that point, then she'll never get married. What am I supposed to... How who I who will never get that? married? My, my little sister. She's 30. That, well, why is that your problem? Well, because I care about her. <laughs> the fact is that, you know, first of all, you're not dating your sister. So right. you're not responsible for whether or not your sister gets married or doesn't. Right. It's not your problem. Right. And, and, and getting uh, into commitments with women is not going to help your sister get married any faster. Right. Did your getting married twice and getting screwed over twice make it any easier for your sister to get married? No. 
That's right. So uh, you do not have your dating uh, life does not have anything to do with your sisters. Right. So here's my other problem. So a little uh, last thing, and I'll let you. I don't want to monopolize it, but you know, so I'm fairly successful, right? I went to a pretty elite law school, and I've got a good job. You I mean, went no, to a law school, and you didn't have a prenuptial agreement. Shame on you. I know, man. I know. She. She she just suckered me in and said that if anything ever happened, I would just walk away. But but again, I, you're an attorney. Hey, I know. I know. Well, let me tell you, I never did divorce law. law and let me tell you something else. For everybody out there who's going to go, who has to go through this, these divorce lawyers are scumbags. I mean, I, I the guy on your website, I called him, and he's he's been pretty good. And I haven't used him yet, and I'm thinking of switching to him. But these other this other guy I use, I mean, they just suck the blood out of you. But the question really is, you know, should I not date girls outside of the sort of same socioeconomic level? Or, or oh what? no, you do. You should definitely date uh, date down. No doubt about it. D you, you know to get into trouble unless you don't use condoms or you get married. Those are the two ways you get in trouble. Right. Use Always condoms, use condoms. Never move in with them. Never marry them. Never give them your ATM card. Never let them be the additional card holder on your American Express card. Uh, never let them live at your address. All right. And what about and sleeping over is out. Out. Uh, how do? Okay. Yeah, that's rough because it's why you know, two o'clock in the morning. I drive to you know and forty five minutes away. Stay in a hotel. You got money. You go to cheap. You go to Motel Six if you you don't feel like driving. Right. Hey, you're, this is great. I really, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't hear about you sooner. And all these guys out there listening, this, you got to pay attention to this stuff. It's, it, it is not just lip service. Your lives will be screwed. I'm, I've been depressed and just sick about this whole thing. Be very careful. There is no love. That is women trying to get into your bank account. That is what it is. It's, it's, it's pathetic. Well, that's what it is. So the thing is, as, as sad as you are for what's happening to you, once you learn to embrace this, you will feel the way I do. Free. Free. I get what I want, and when women stamp their little feet and they want more, I tell them there's the door, and they go, well, I'm not going to sleep with you anymore. And it's like, fine. I'm getting tired of you anyway. I'm bored now. Right. And then you move. It's the perfect crime. I know, you're, but you're I gonna know you stop. About... You're gonna stop seeing me. Oh my God! Right about the time I'm bored with seeing you naked. Right. It's just you know, the, the, Tom. The only the other thing I'll say is that I guess we're in a different age, or what? Because you had a mom, I had a mom, and you know, I don't know if it's romantic or whatever, but you know, we we kind of like to think that our moms were a little different than this. Yeah. Well, guess what? Your mom lived in the era before MySpace, Facebook. Text messaging, uh, computers, having 17 email addresses that your boyfriend or husband has no access to, going to work and being there and flirting with the other guys in the office. That stuff didn't go on when our moms were around. Right. You see? That's why our parents might have been married 30 or 40 years, but today you don't have moms like you used to have. Because today's moms, it's Craigslist, 28-year-old grandma looking to have fun. That's what's out there today. And you have to deal with what's out there today. Your yeah. women like your mom are not out there anymore. Yeah, and this girls. Way, right? Here's here's how life works now in the United States. A twelve year old girls watch Hannah Montana on the Disney Channel, and they see Miley Cyrus post your pictures on MySpace. So they get webcams in their uh, bedrooms and PayPal accounts, and they have guys sending them money to take their clothes off. Uh, they're all uh, sexually active by age 15 or 16, and sometimes, in fact, many times, a lot earlier than that. By the time they get to be 19, 20, 21, they're already jaded about sex. They right. see the connection between money and sex. Right. And they also uh, have any number of ways. You know, your mom could not get out of the house without your dad knowing about it. Sure. Well, Do you know, when I was a kid, let me tell you about my mom and dad. We had one car. When my dad went to work, my mom was stranded. Sure. There was no way my mom could have an affair. There was no sure. way my mom could get a text message from somebody. Right. Well, they probably, but you know what? They wouldn't even think about it, probably. I mean, if they could, they, they wouldn't about think about it because there was no... The, the, the reason people are... <laughs> the reason people screw around is because they can. Right. Do you what understand? Are you gonna do? Tom, do you have kids? I don't know enough about you. Do you have kids? No. What, what's your, what are you going to do? 
What do you mean, what am I going to do? Just not have kids. I don't want to have kids. Right. I, you know what? I want the freedom to do what I want to do. You know right, where man. I've been in the past year? Let me tell you. Tuscany, London, Paris, Biarritz, right. Costa Rica. No, I know, but I, I mean, I, I've done that stuff too. It gets kind of old. No, it doesn't. <laughs> have you been to every country on earth? Uh, like 45 of them. Yeah. Well, guess what? You got another 145 to go. Yeah. No, I agree with you. You're right. You're right. I agree. And I just want these guys to know, I'm not just saying this. It is hell. I mean, it. it's like, you know, borderline you want to kill yourself. But that's only because you bought into the idea that you're going to marry somebody sweet like your mom. Right. That's right. Yeah. You know, if you want to see how sweet women aren't, go on to Facebook and MySpace and look at all the women who have pictures of their children and sometimes pictures of a boyfriend or a husband. What are they doing on MySpace? Yeah. Why are you able to see bikini shots of other men's wives? I agree. You're right. You're you're right on. That's the world today. Hey, okay. Listen, I don't know the blow all the blow me ups, but what's a fun blow me up? <laughs> well, maybe one you should uh, that will help you remember this is Lacey Peterson style. It's tasteless, but it'll get the point across. <laughs> It's like it's 101. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Eileen on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How are you? Just great. Wonderful. Just had a quick question for you. I'm just a little curious. Why is it that it took you four times to figure out? You have to watch your mouth, and if you curse again, are we going to... No. No, I didn't see a bad word. I said blood-sucking freaks of nature. Blood sucking. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, all women are not blood sucking freaks of nature. Well, never you know, said they were. No, no, no. I'm saying that. That's oh, what you I'm think they are? I'm, I'm calling women that. All right. So you I, believe they are that? No, I'm just saying. I've that. had this conversation on the program many times. I right. got married four times because my parents were married until my father died. They were married my father's whole life. And I believe that that's the way. Do you want the answer or not? You're not going to. If you want the answer, do not interrupt and do not argue with it. Do you understand? Uh, go on. Otherwise, I will not answer your question. All right, go on. So uh, I believe that that was the way things were supposed to be. And I proceeded to uh, follow the uh, example of my parents. And when marriage failed, by the way, the first marriage failed because my wife at the time had promised she did not want to have children and would not. And then three years in changed her mind. Mm -hmm. But I never changed my mind. Right. That, that's not because she was a blood sucker. She had the right to change her mind and I had the right to say I didn't change my mind. Okay. Simple. Enough. Okay, so then I thought, well, my goodness, I guess I was just too young or she was too young and I just made a mistake. But clearly my parents uh, did the way you're supposed to do it. And so I tried again. Okay. And I found someone young and innocent and wonderful who later, uh, the, you know, well, when she wasn't so innocent anymore, uh, went out and had an affair. Mm -hmm. Then lied about it. Then lied about it even though I had evidence. Huh. So was I supposed to stay there? And was that the fault of marriage? Well, I didn't think so. I thought it was just me picking badly. So I tried it again. Because again, my parents were married for 40 years. So I thought that they did it right and I was screwing up. I later realized this is another era from when my parents got married. And these days, uh, women have their MySpace pages and their Facebook pages and their text messaging and their email addresses and their own cell phone numbers and their own cell phones. And they keep in touch with all their exes and they keep in touch through classmates.com with everybody they went to high school with. Women go to work now and flirt with the other guys at the office. That's the world in which we live. Right. But so, but so I, again, because my parents did it, that was a very powerful thing. 
by the same Don't person. argue with me. You asked why, and I answered it. There's nothing yeah. to argue with me. I'm not arguing. Yes, you I'm are. Trying, I'm trying to get... You, I already to... answered the question. If you don't like okay. the answer, tough luck, that's the answer. No, that's fine. Good. I understand that. So, no, nothing I'm more not... to discuss about that. I answered it. Okay. Can I finish? No. Because then you're going to argue with me about it. And I'm not going to let you do it. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Natasha on the top. You see, that, that is the way that women talk. My sisters were like that when they were kids. Uh, they tried to browbeat you and they could, yeah, yes, you did. No, I didn't. 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 Yes, you did. No. And, and, and finally you just say, fine, I did it. Yeah, they just break you down. They tried to beat you down. I'm not going to allow it on the program. I'm not going to allow it here. I tolerated enough of that, having two sisters when I was a kid. I will not tolerate it from women that I date, and I will not tolerate it from callers. I won't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No. You did so, did not. Did so, did not. Did so, did not. So why did you get married four times? I just told you why I got married four times. Okay, well, I'm not asking about that. What do you want to ask about? Why did you get married four times? <sighs> That's why I live alone, folks. That's why I had to get 20 acres to myself. Just to be as far from that as possible. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Natasha on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Papa Tom. How you doing, Natasha? Great, and hello to all my fellow listeners out there. I can't hear them saying hello back, but we'll assume they did for the They for the did, record. they did. Okay. <laughs> Tom, I am 25 years old, and I have been listening to you since I was a senior in high school. I'm from Los Angeles, born and raised, and... Um, I got tuned on to you through my cousin who was going through a divorce at the time, and she's in her late 40s now. So I just wanted to tell you a little story. I was at Radio Shack about mm, an hour ago or so, and I was being helped out by this young guy, and I noticed a wedding band on his finger, and I asked him, how old are you? He says, I'm 18. And I said, you're married? And he said, yeah. And I said, you're so young. I said, and you have your whole life ahead of you. He said, oh, I've been through it all. I, I, I've been through it in high school. He's like, and I have my hobbies. I said, yeah, so do I. And then I said, when you reach your 40s, maybe your early 30s, you're going to have a lot of regret. I said, but I wish you luck. And he said, no, when I'm in my 40s, I'm going to be retired. And I said, not working here, hun. <laughs> Well, okay. There you go. That's it. And also to touch base on yesterday's topic, what names men what names um men wouldn't do women's names. If I was a man, I would not do a woman by the name of Minerva. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I and I have a friend that's her sister's name, so I hope she's not listening right now. <laughs> <laughs> Minerva. Have you ever heard of that name? Minerva? Minerva. Yes, I've, I've heard that. I have heard that name. Uh, you don't hear it often. No, you don't. You don't. So I had to call for that purpose as well. And I love you, Tom. I do. Well, thank you, Natasha. Oh, and by the way, I'm an LA 10, and yes, I am Mexican. Really? <laughs> yes. Have I, I Have I ever met you? No, you haven't. Why not? Oh, I don't think we'll bump into each other. Maybe one day up north. You probably have a boyfriend. Hell, no, I don't. Really? <laughs> uh, uh, uh. If you're in LA 10, I'll have to bump into you sooner than that. <laughs> you have a good day, Tom. All right, darling, you too. Have fun over there. Oh, my God. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's like us 101. Jace. Jace, you're on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going, Papa? Great. Excellent. I wanted to say I've been listening to your show for a couple of years now. I'm a big fan. And uh, the reason I'm calling in today is because I've been dating my girlfriend for about six years. And really happy relationship. And I know, of course, like this one on thing, don't get married. But I have to admit, you know, things have been going so well. We've been dating for a long time. And marriage is something that I've been thinking about. Why? 
Well, I just I feel like it's a risk that I understand uh, doesn't work out well for more than fifty percent of marriages, but. At the same time, it seems like a risk that I think would be worthwhile to really. Why? What? What is the benefit to you? Well, I think it's a comfort benefit. Um, I mean, I understand we've been together for six years, so the comfort of the relationship is already there. But at the same time, it's sort of the comfort of knowing that uh, it's something to show. It's something to say that we have, and something that I think would definitely make her feel happy. It would make her feel happy because if things don't work out, she gets half of everything you have. Well, that's true. But if she's willing to sign a prenup, then that I guess wouldn't really be so much of an issue, right? Well, we don't know that she's willing to sign a prenup. That's true. But if she was, though. But we don't know that she is. True. You haven't even discussed it with her. Well, the issue has come up once or twice. I've kind of tried to dodge around it just because I'm not entirely positive. That's bah, you tried to dodge around it because you know damn well she would not want to sign a prenup. <laughs> well, the thing is that she's more of an old-fashioned kind of girl. Well, uh, again, so you, you will not get a prenup. <laughs> okay. Right? Um, that's a possibility, yes. Well, a likelihood. That's a likelihood, okay. Right, so um, why do you even bring up a prenup? Well, I mean, I think it makes sense, at least from what... From what you are not it. going to get her to sign it. Yeah. <laughs> I see, yeah. So it's irrelevant. So you are risking half of everything you earn. Yeah, but I think it's a risk that I'd be willing to take. Well, why? why would you be willing to take that risk? You have a perfectly good situation now. Well, sure, it's a good situation, but... Why would you I want to ruin that? Well, I mean, you could live good or you could go for great. I mean, it's worth the risk. No, no, it doesn't off. get... Take it from me. Mm -hmm. Married four times. It doesn't change. So it doesn't get better. Yeah. It does not get better. Yeah. It does not get better. Signing a contract that locks you in. Like, I tell you what. Okay, that would be like saying that closing the jail cell and locking it <laughs> would, would make things better. Uh-huh. Tying a well, chain around your ankle and <laughs> chaining you to a fire hydrant would not make things better. Not true. Why would you assume that? Well, I guess it, it just it kind of goes beyond money where we're just, I know you say how so many people call in and, oh, this girl is the perfect one, but I'm going to have to fall into that category. I feel like, you know, the girl is great and she's proven herself so many Fine, times. but they, there's no need to sign a contract. Yeah. If it's well, that great, why do you need to sign a piece of paper? Well, I'd like to have kids, too, and that's the sort of you thing... You don't like need to sign a piece of paper to do that, either. Yeah. It would be nice to have a celebration. I mean, even if it's sort of an informal sort of thing. No, but. no, it wouldn't. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. You know, anything it's, 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 anything that might result in you paying vagina money would not be a good <laughs> thing. Okay. But I guess, in theory, if, if it turned out to be, I know it's a you know, one in a million shot for but if it turned out to be, you know, the right girl, you know, the right... No, thing, there is no such thing. Well, there is never a need to take that kind of risk. Well, there's not a need to take a lot of risks in life, but sometimes it can help benefit. The, the, what are the benefits? Well, like I said, just sort of the comfort, you know, the... What? You're not comfortable? Oh, I'm comfortable, yeah. So how much good. comfort do you need? <laughs> well, personally, I would be comfortable, I guess, continuing as things are going. But I know it's something that's important to her, and it's something that I think would be a nice thing to have, sort of. It's but don't you understand, the longer you date a woman, uh -huh. the more miles she put on the odometer, <laughs> the more the pendulum swings your way. Yeah. She's much less likely to leave you now. Because she feels like she's already invested six of the best years of her life. So she's less likely to leave now than if you'd only been dating her for six months. Yeah, but I only see her as the kind of girl that would, I think, leave our relationship. It's such a good relationship that we have. What makes you think she'd leave? Oh, nothing makes you think she'd leave. I That's think my point. If she wouldn't leave, why take a risk and sign yourself into slavery when you don't have to? Ah, uh, I see. Yeah, I guess I don't have an answer for that one. What do you do for a living? Oh, I'm an animator in Hollywood. You're an animator in Hollywood. Does that pay well? Uh, yeah, six-figure income. Six-figure income. Uh -huh. Why would you want to put that at risk? Well, it's, I guess she's been with me since before I had you know my money. So what? So what? She well, Doesn't she have a job? Yeah. Uh -huh. So there's no reason to risk what you have. She has her own job, her own career, her own money. You don't need to risk yours. That's true. 
But I mean, she's so set on the idea of marriage and children. I definitely want to have children too, and marriage sounds like an okay idea to me. For yeah, but it's not an okay, okay idea. Now, if you insist on having children, at least all you're obligated to, if things don't work out, is child support, which you would have to pay either way. Uh huh. But alimony is not something you're obligated to either way. That's true. Hmm. But I guess just in, in I mean, just the unlikely scenario. It's for example, you can live with her if you must, and have children with her. Well, we've been living together for a few years now. So, I, well, and which is also a bad idea. But I had a feeling you're already doing it. Yeah. And if you are doing it, you could have children with her without being married. And then when things don't work out, which in most cases they don't, uh-huh. uh, then you would be you would owe her the child support that you owe anyway. Yeah. The formula for child support is the same whether you're married or not. Well, that makes sense. But alimony is something you only pay when you get married. Yeah. I might add, if you break up and you decide for some bizarre reason you want to make payments to her, you can do that voluntarily. <laughs> but why would you want a judge to get involved in who gets the knives and who gets the forks? Yeah. But I guess that's the sort of thing. It's uh, How do you talk to a girl out of wanting to get married? That's right? how. You've got a great life now. Things are great. Mm-hmm. Why would you want to upset the apple cart? <laughs> I guess you have a good point there. I guess it's almost more of a societal sort of thing, you know, just sort of the... Those days are over, pal. Do you, I, do you know some statistics? Do you know that we've been taking the census of the United States in 1790? Do you know that in the 2000 census, for the first time, the majority of households are headed by a single person? Hmm. Do you know that for the first time since 1790, the majority of women are unmarried? Uh, no, I didn't know that. These are facts. Huh. Checkable facts. <laughs> I believe you. So uh, what you talk about, the pressure of society or societal this or societal that, forget it. Society's not getting married to the same extent anymore. That's a good, good point. By the way, men, the average age of men getting married, which was once 21 or 23, is now 28. Mm -hmm. What's the rush? Oh, I'm not in a rush. This is something that's been crossing my mind lately for the future. I mean, not like an immediate future, but something I've been thinking about. And well, I know your firm stands on it, but I thought I'd, you know, kind of try and directly, you know, to the, talk to the man himself. Hang on a second. Bailey, what did you want to say to Jace here? Well, I was telling him that's, that's great that he wants to get married. But, I mean, from just what I'm listening here, he's, if, if he's calling in to, no, you know, I've, been with my boyfriend he's significantly older than me and i'm not going anywhere and i'm not ugly by any means i'm cute smart bright been married didn't work out and decided hey you know what he's on to something no need to get married because once you get married everything changes you know this girl's been with him for six years she's not going anywhere all right cool thank you so good luck with that. He says thank you. <laughs> there you go. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800. The Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. Likas 101. I am your professor. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Dave. Dave is listening to us on the online stream at San Jose of the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Going okay. I got a question for you. Yes. I'm a, I'm a relatively new listener, and, uh, you know, I've, I've been uh, learning the Likas philosophy. You know, I traditionally have had, uh, you know, somewhat serious relationships, girlfriends. I, I understand that's something you, uh, you advise that we avoid. Uh, right now, I've been seeing this girl for about two months, and, you know, most of the time, she's, she's all right, and, you know, sometimes she gets on my nerves, I'm sure, that, as all women do. Uh, you know, we use condoms. I'm 100% in agreement with you on that, and, uh, you know, I'm just not... What's your advice on how to, how to just ditch the girlfriend and, you know, just live the light kiss lifestyle? Well, ditch her. I mean, how hard is that? Does she live with you? No, 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 she doesn't. Although, actually, she has been talking about she's going to be in between apartments and she wants to crash with me for a week or two. Ah, she's going to be between apartments. You know, your apartment is the Roach Motel. Roaches check in, but they can't check out. Yeah, you know, I mean, I guess, have you, have you always been this way where, you know, you just, uh, you just know girlfriends? I mean, when, when a girl I wish I had been this way. 
What's that? I wish I always had been this way. So, you know, when you made the change, I mean, how did you handle it? You, you, you know, if a girl wants to get serious, how do you just say, nope, sorry. I'm not go. ready for that. I'm not ready for that. Not ready. Okay. I'm not ready for that. All right. All right. Sounds I good. may never um, be ready for that. So, if you have, I mean... We, another one I say is, you know, you got something really good going on here. Why would you want to waste that? Why would you want to ruin it? Why point. would you want to risk it? So, I mean, are you advising just to avoid girlfriends completely or just to... to I advise, it? I advise that, that you don't get married, that you don't live with a woman, and that you try to avoid monogamous relationships. You try to avoid that kind of commitment. Okay. Because you don't have to do it. It's not sure. necessary. Okay, um, so just any, I mean... I mean, what do you want a girlfriend for? Well, it's convenient. It's, it's what really do you mean it's convenient? convenient? It's convenient to, uh, you think they're going to have sex with you, whatever you want? Clearly yep. you haven't had a girlfriend. <laughs> well, it, it's a lot easier to have sex with a girlfriend than it is. It's not. Or... You think it is, but it isn't. Once they know they've got you hooked, then they start telling you all the reasons they're not interested in sex as much as you thought they were. Hmm. Or as often as you thought they were. Do you know I married somebody one time who, after I married her, said to me, you know, I never did like having sex in the morning. And I <laughs> said to her, I'm... This girl doesn't this is like having it now well, in the morning. <laughs> she doesn't like it now. Well, there you go. So what I said to her was, I said, why didn't you tell me that before? And she said, well, I didn't feel comfortable, but now that we're married, I feel like I can say anything to you. But wouldn't now, it have been, now that you have no choice, wouldn't it, right? Wouldn't it have been fair to me to tell me that before I signed the contract, so yeah, I can no, make I, a decision? So trust me when I tell you, uh, there's things she's doing right now to try to get you uh, in the back pocket, and then once she gets you in the back pocket and you are signed into slavery, she's going to tell you all the things she doesn't want to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I mean, I'm 100% against marriage. Now, I'm just kind of curious what level of seriousness I should have with my girlfriends and relationships. You shouldn't have anything called a girlfriend. Okay. That's the level right. of seriousness. All right. Well, yeah, like I said, I'm a new listener. Uh, you know, I love your show. i keep listening. Thanks for the advice. And uh, <laughs> Dave, thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Like Us 101. I am your professor. This is Mike. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much. How are you? Great. Hey, Tom, man, I moved here a couple years ago. I go to Cal State Northridge. I'm 22. Um, when I first moved here from California, from Ohio, um, my roommates were 26, and I was, like, 18, and they're all into your show, and I, I listened to it. And to tell you the truth, I thought, you know, I hated everything you said. You know, I lived in a bubble my entire life in Ohio. You know, no one in my family has ever been divorced. You know, I was protected against the world, and now that I live in California, I see how evil the world is. You know, not with girls. You, you know, do not see how evil the world is. You know, in Ohio, the girls are not as hot as the girls here. Of no, course, no, you know, of course, they stay I married think, forever. I I don't think the girls are hot in LA. I like the Midwest Abercrombie looking girls. Oh. Not, but you know, so I made a mistake. I had a girlfriend. She was in. I was going to CSUN. She was out in Bowling Green, Ohio. We did a year long distance. We were dating since we were seven. Long distance relationships. There's no such thing as a long distance. Tom like his show. Should ship. Yeah.